Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found, and of course, taped live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Where this coming Saturday, we will be doing our second ever 24 hour stream. Why do we do that? Why are we doing that? Oh, because we hit 1500 subs, my friend. Well, I know, like, all technically out. why. I know technically why, yeah. but why did we, why do we, why do we do it? Why do we Even put ourselves says, through this Ugh. stuff? Why do we yeah. put ourselves through this stuff? Is know. the question. You know why? Because we're a couple of goofs who have a goof job for a living, man. And so we do silly things like 20. I know, but we're old. We can't, we can't handle putting our bodies through that anymore. I feel great. I had a great weekend, man. It was uh, the wife's birthday weekend. Oh Uh, yeah. What'd you do? uh, We went to uh, see the last duel, Mm. uh, which uh, is if, if all movies like that, that'd be the last movie I ever watch. Oh, no good, huh? No, it's actually decent, but it's difficult to sit through because it's got very heavy subject material. You see the trailer, and you think it's going to be like Matt Damon, uh, uh, Kylo Ren, and the, the other guy, the Ben Affleck, Batman, just jousting. And sh- it ain't, it ain't that. There's, uh, there's some really heavy stuff in that movie. Yeah, I gathered from the trailer there is potentially some heavy subject matter in it. Yeah, you got to watch a particular scene twice, like Oof. a really brutal scene twice. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's a really well-made movie. But uh, Matt Damon, it's hard to watch a movie with Matt Damon and not just think, oh, look at Matt Damon, you know. And then especially when he's on screen with Ben Affleck, you just want him to say, oh, how you like them apples? Yeah. Uh, but uh, but no, we had a good time. We did that. We uh, had some drinks before that. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, it was it was good. It was a good birthday. Uh, good. So, yeah, we had a good time. We had, of course, you know, Bama is coming down the last couple cheer games. So in the morning, we were working the merch booth over there at uh, the high school. Mm. And uh, there was a snack bar nearby, so we got a couple of 9.30 in the morning cheeseburgers. So that's, real burgers, not breakfast burgers. No, yeah, real burgers. And that's, well, it, it was for breakfast, so I call them breakfast burgers. Well, uh, I mean, it was a, a, a beef patty, not sausage. There's correct. no egg on it. That's what I'm getting at. Honestly, it's going to be one of the things that I miss about uh, cheer being done with is texting you and the enforcer at 9.30 in the morning updates on uh, the cuisine at these various high schools that we're going to. Yeah, but you know, you know, all well, it'll be an annual tradition going forward. I'm, I imagine then. Huh? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if she wants to do it again. But uh, hey, by the way, nice shirt. Hey, look at that. We're twinsies. What a bunch of Poindexters we are. We got this great Super Click shirt. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Speaking of the Super Click, we're going to be doing our AEW recap a little bit later in this show. Uh, uh, but yeah, I wanted to push that. And then, of course, this Thursday, we've got Crown Jewel, what we call yeah. Crown Royal here at the show. As yeah. sort of a goof as well. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be at 9 o'clock in the morning Pacific. 9 a.m. in the morning. I don't know if that's the kickoff Noon show Eastern. or if the main card is starting at, at 9 a.m. Well, I'm sure we can look that up. or Maybe somebody here yeah. in chat can, yeah. uh, can help us out with that. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're going to be live with the with the enforcer. I believe he got Thursdays. I think, I think he got Thursday taken care of. So I think he's going to be there with us, if I'm not mistaken. Awesome. So that's great. Yeah, that'll uh, be fun. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the 24 the 24 hours. I'll be honest with you. I think it's gonna be fun. This year is a little bit different. We've, we've been doing Twitch a lot longer now, 12 months longer now, uh, and so we've got things like live, you know, Smash Zone that we could do. Lots of GTA we're gonna do. So you can, if you have a PS4, yeah, or PS5, you can play here's with the us. Thing. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we're gonna get uh, plenty of, of of bang for people's entertainment dollar here. We're gonna there, uh, there's not gonna be lulls. I understand that. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I'm worried about pushing ourselves past our limits. Ah, limits. Limits are for mere regular people, Larson. You and I are content creators. <laughs> we have no such things as limits. <laughs> Anyways. Nah, man, it's gonna it's gonna be a blast. Uh and yeah, it's pro- probably 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 gonna be hurting around uh four o'clock in the morning, knowing that we still have six hours six left. Six hours left. Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, hopefully y'all will join us for that. Uh, but yeah, before we get into our AEW recap, there's plenty of news from the weekend. What's first. What do you want to talk about first, man? Uh, let's talk about carrying cross. Uh, so it seems like from the beginning, uh, the main roster creative team basically had no idea what to do. With them. Like his entrance is different. 
he doesn't have Scarlet with him. Like his first match, he lost in less than two minutes to Jeff Hardy via roll up. So like, was he going to get some sort of hey, I have to get acclimated to main roster type story? But then he started winning, and then he lost again. Then he got like a helmet. It's it's just a bunch of ideas thrown at the wall. So anyways, according to WrestleVotes, it appears that they're already taking his character, which they've already made adjustments to, in a new direction. This is what Russell Votes had to say. Quote, sources state WB is shifting Karrion Cross's character once again. Plan is for him to be more of a psycho, mm-hmm. yet still calm and cool. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, sorry, as of now, the helmet stays, but for whatever reason, still no Scarlet. Presentation of entrance, including theme music, set the change as well. I'm, That's I like would, the one thing he they had right for him in NXT was presentation. He showed up and he looked like a star. Yeah. I, number one, just for the, the benefit of the doubt on their end, I would think that Scarlett, there's something going on which would preclude her from being on screen. I mean, WWE is a lot of things, but they're not so stupid as to not include her just because they're like, oh, we don't know what to do. Um, because she really does add a lot to his, as you say, presentation. Mm-hmm. Um Look, we all it was all clear as day that Karrion Cross, his main roster call up, and I'll be honest with you, even the last his last little stint in NXT seemed to be some sort of like weird I don't know what the deal was, but I to this day people still post that clip of Adam Cole running him down for being a bad wrestler on in that last promo in NXT. And then when he showed up on main roster, it just it just felt like, hey, we're either seeing if this guy can can swim when thrown into the deep end, stripped of the things that made him what he was in NXT, like you said, presentation. Um, let's see if he can swim with everything stripped away and with the humiliation of losing in two minutes to a guy, granted a legend, but a legend who recently had been on uh, uh, WWE's main event losing to, uh, I think, Veer or Sh- I think Shanky. I believe it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. It, it was it was less of a, and this, WWE does this all the time. His main roster call-up was less, let's try to make this as entertaining as possible, and more, let's make a statement. Or let's, or let's punish make an somebody. example. Or let's make an example. Whatever the situation yeah. was, the goal wasn't let's make this guy, let's give this guy the best shot at succeeding and let's make it as entertaining and as cool for people as possible. WWE seemed more interested in making an example, making a statement, saying something to Paul Levesque about the state of NXT. And then we got 2.0 shortly after that. I don't know what the deal was, but it clearly wasn't let's entertain the people with this stuff. No, it wasn't that. And let's try to make someone. It wasn't that or let's try to make someone a star. Yeah. But here's the thing. Now they got all that out of the way, whatever mm-hmm. it was. Are, are they, are they, now is 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 carrying cross a bit of a reclamation project for them? Oh, here's a guy who's what? Six, three, six, four. Uh, you know, he's he's got the look. He's got some charisma. We haven't seen a ton of it lately, but he does put in the right situation he could do well now they're like okay this guy has some ingredients let's try to do something with them after they they hamstrung him upon uh uh his debut yeah you know and and i if you want to go to the psycho because didn't impact he came out with the suit right he had a hitman vibe yeah yeah so when i when i hear psycho yet call me cool that's yeah that's sure. the image i have in my head you know yeah, it's patrick Bateman. whether that's yeah pretty much but then the mask state or the helmet stays okay God, I hope he so, wears a suit with the helmet. Yeah, I know. So is is it is he like a a a, 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 a gladiator hitman then? Yeah, he's like because that's the thing yeah. now is gladiator. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I don't know. It, the straps were silly. The he man straps were silly. They were looked terrible. like something from Party City. Um, no offense to Party City, but if you want cheesy costumes, that's where you go. At a um, bargain, usually too. At a bargain, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I don't know what even this, you know, oh, he's a psycho yet calm and cool. What was he before? Like, he, he he wasn't like well, an in, berserker in, in, guy before. Well, in NXT, in his feud against Finn, they made a point of saying, or the, the kind of crux of the story was, is are his emotions a liability to him, or do they power him up, essentially? Yeah. In the end, they powered him up. I mean, dude, let me, let's be honest. He is, he, yeah, I don't know, that's weird. 
Psycho yet calm and cool. To me, that that's a suit. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like I know. what? What? What is going to be different about him now? And and how, and how many how many weeks or days are they going to try this out? And then he's just going to be chasing the twenty four seven title. So maybe they'll do this in everything except in ring competition. He'll wear the suits. He'll have yeah. the, we'll bring back the leather blazer mm-hmm. he used to wear. Yeah, all that. But when he's in the ring, it's the gladiator stuff. Okay. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Which just they've kind of been doing like various things. He had that vignette, or he's had a couple of vignettes kind of like that, anyways, where he's wearing like a nicer suit. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean, to be honest with you, it's look, it's okay. There's been plenty of times, and, and and Pritchard often calls them attractions, where you just wheel a guy out there who really doesn't know much about what to do in the ring, but you put enough bells and whistles on him, and he's and yeah, people love him, you know. So I don't know why they just don't do that with this guy. Like, what does it matter? I know. If he, if he, I know. You know, just have him do, do a couple of doomsday Saito suplexes. Uh, uh, I don't know where Scarlet is, but when she's ready, bring her back and give him back the whole kit and caboodle when it comes to his entrance. It yeah. was cool in NXT. You could still do that. Yeah, it was that. really good. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah. It was really effective. Um, speaking of, of WB superstars, there's a former WB superstar Ooh. you might be seeing shortly, Broad. PW Insider. He's had a cup of coffee. My goodness. PW Insider is reporting that Adam Shear. Formerly known as Braun Strowman, recently met with Impact exec Scott Demore during this weekend's Motor City Comic Con in Detroit. PW Insider adds that uh, uh, Adam Shear, Scott Demore, uh, quote, were sitting for a long time with Shear arriving to meet Demore, who was waiting for MPWinsider.com, has been told Impact has been working on several surprises for next weekend's Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory pay per view. So it should be interesting to see if Cher is one of those surprises. It's going to be fun because we're going to be watching it on our 24-7 stream. Yes, and doing predictions during the show. 24-hour stream. Um, Yes, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. I think uh, I watched um, a bunch of this past week's Impact. Uh, There was the end of Swinger's Palace because they're all packing up to move to to Vegas. Um, Mm. and, uh, And Chris Sabin was really sad to hear about all that. He was reminiscing. Exactly. He was reminiscing. Uh, uh, they did like a little flashback video package. Uh, uh, Swinger was pretty funny. It was it, yeah, it was a really poignant thing. You know, Swinger's Palace was like always there during that brief period of time when we started co-streaming on Twitch. It was like mm-hmm. a fixture. So uh, a bummer that uh, that it's, it's going to be gone now. Hopefully we'll find something else, some other yes. gimmick for them to do. Uh, I think I think uh, Braun Titan, I, Titan. I'm, if that's going to be his his ring name in the future, would be a good addition to Impact. Um, uh, it seemed like it be it could be a good home for him for a couple of years, maybe. Yeah, and sure. uh, it'd be a huge get for Impact Wrestling, who is is trying like 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 heck to raise their profile. They've been putting on entertaining shows for a while now. So yeah, no, they got they got a good thing going. I think they're in a pretty good groove. In terms of managing people coming, people going, uh, of course, uh, Inspiration, formerly known as the Iconics, are going to be challenging for the tag, mm-hmm. for the Knockouts tag titles mm-hmm. at Bound for Glory. That's a, a big deal. Uh, Heath and Rhino are going to be back as a tag team mm-hmm. um, at uh, taking on Violent by Design at Bound for Glory. So uh, Impact is a great mix of sort of like old and new. Uh, uh, so yeah, it, it should be good stuff. The um, X Division title, of course, is now. Uh, has been cashed in, so it's yeah. vacant. It's going to be uh, Trey Miguel, El Fantasmo, and Macklin uh, mm. vying for it. So I would not be shocked to see Steve Macklin as your new yeah. X Division champion. They've been yeah, pushing I would not be surprised hard. by that either. Yeah, yeah, but no Titan there. Oh man, how do you not like? Uh, you got Christian, you got Josh Alexander at Bound for Glory. How do you not get Braun uh, Titan in there? It's going to be a while before I get that name right. Yeah, uh, same. You know, how do you not put that title? I mean, he's he was a big deal in WWE. He was like he a was. big deal in WWE. Yeah, at a certain point, it seemed like he was going to be the next the guy. Yeah, right. Huge deal, you know, yeah. when they were booking him right. Yeah. We're, oh, well, it's a rain to be seen. What's your early seen. prediction on uh, Christian versus uh, Josh Alexander? Oh, Josh Alexander's got to win that. You think so? Yeah, Christian's yeah, been, he's he's been a bit missing in action from, uh, I think he's going to go back to AEW, right? Yeah, well, Jungle Boy said during Dynamite that a Christian had a had a sore neck. Oh, okay. That's what he said. That's the euphemism for working in Impact now? I guess so. All I right. guess so. All right, let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, ExpressVPN. You know, Larson, the other day, 
I really wanted to watch some fresh Prince of Bel Air, man. So I fired up Netflix only to find out that, hey, it's not there. But then I remembered that I can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows and movies available in other countries. So I fired up the app, and sure enough, Fresh Prince is waiting for me on Netflix Australia. Yeah, ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so you dictate where streaming sites think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries, and it's super easy to use. Just open the app, select the location, hit connect, refresh the page, and a whole new world of entertainment will be available to you. With ExpressVPN, you can stream in HD with no buffering or lag, and it's compatible with all your devices. We're talking phones, laptops, smart TVs, and more. And not only can you use ExpressVPN to change your location, it also encrypts your data and lets you surf the internet safely. So go to expressvpn.com slash G-I-R to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Expressvpn.com slash G-I-R. All right, before we get back to the show, let's get a word in from our sponsor, Simply Safe. You know, Larson, when you're like me and you have a house full of gold, I'm talking about those championship belts back there, you need to keep your home safe. And I've got some big news about my favorite home security company. Simply Safe has a brand new wireless outdoor security camera that is engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you need to help keep you, your family, and your gold safe. That's right. Simply Safe, the system that has already been named by U.S. News and World Report, the best home security system of 2021, has gotten even better. This new wireless outdoor security camera has got an ultra wide field of view so you can watch your whole yard. Plus, 1080p, that's high definition resolution, so you can zoom in and clearly see things like faces and license plates and a built in spotlight. Get this with color night vision so you can keep an eye on what's going on day or night. Yeah, man. And the camera integrates with your Simply Safe home security system, meaning your protection extends outside. Together, it means every door, window, and room are protected. And now your property, including your championship titles, will be too. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash raw. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash raw. Uh, this was kind of interesting. So apparently there's a WWE championship just out there somewhere. Rhea Ripley tweeted yesterday morning that her suitcase with her ring gear and WWE women's tag team title had gone missing. My moshers of Albuquerque. I know this is a stretch, But if any of you have seen a black travel suitcase around Office Boulevard and Montano Road, please hold on to it and let me know. It has all my gear in it, including my title. Cheers. Get back to Ray Ripley. That's a bummer. Did you see that uh, apparently Damien Priest lent her some pants for the show last night? I heard about that. Did they look ridiculously like too long on her? Not that I noticed. She's pretty tall, but he's also super tall. So Yeah. Interesting stuff. And that I mean, actually, if you had told me that she had gotten her, at least her, her pants back, I'd be like, okay, looks like her pants. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Way to have, yeah. way to have your friends back there. Damien Priest he seems like such mm-hmm. a nice guy that Damien. He does seem like a nice guy. When you he's know? turned down my offer of a donut, he did in the most polite way possible. Very politely. He seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. Right. That's good to see. Uh, this is great to see. I'm very happy about this because this was my, as a fan, of uh, Buddy Murphy, now Buddy Matthews. Oh, his preferred des- your preferred destination for Buddy. As a fan of him, I thought this was the place. The one thing that he always had a... Buddy Murphy was always able to connect with fans more from his in-ring work than ever being on the mic. That was my feeling. And I feel like he really was able to connect with people once he got in the ring. New Japan announced this weekend that Buddy Matthews, formerly known as Buddy Murphy in WWE, starting with the promotion on November 11th, at Battle in the Valley in San Jose, one train trip away for us. Um, well, not me. I'm being I'm gonna be in Southern California that weekend. Well, I was saying in general, we can oh. you know it's it's a lovely oh, train ride specifically. Yeah. I went to WrestleMania on a train mm-hmm. when we went there mm-hmm. for thirty one. Yeah. Um. So uh, that's great for him, man. That is great. He can really. I mean, that's the place you want to go to if you really want to focus on your in ring stuff. Uh, where do you? Where would you like to see him fit within? 
the landscape of New Japan factions. I think, I mean, obviously Bullet Club would be uh, uh, an obvious destination for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where Mm -hmm. else uh, do you think he might be able to fit in there? Um, Or potential feuds you'd like to see him in? I'd assume for the time being he's going to be like on strong and stuff. That'd be my guess, right? Yeah, that's a good possibility. But like Chris Bay is in Bullet Club and he's only on like yeah. uh, Impact, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would join Chaos. I don't feel like Chaos has really uh, expanded uh, their faction at all lately. Yeah, I'm join Chaos. Yeah, okay. There you <laughs> go. Taguchi Japan is that still a thing? I don't think that's a thing anymore. Probably not a thing anymore. Uh, you know? Oh, hey, maybe uh, in the Empire, they're adding people. Then yeah. they just add a couple of Australians. Yeah. Isn't he, isn't he from well, Australia? Yeah, then I think TJP joined the Empire too. Oh. Yeah, okay, never mind. Stay yeah. away from them then. Yeah. Um Yeah, okay. Yeah. Bullet I do be this Bullet Club. The thing that I love about Impact this week is that whenever Bullet Club people come out, they never use their individual themes. It's well it's the... Yeah, for in, for Phantasmo they did. For Chris Bay He's got like the opening thing, and then there's like a rap over. I think I don't know if it's the rest of it or it's got its own beat or whatever. But uh, but yeah, you get to hear the the original bullet. The Club original, theme. yeah, it's great. Bullet Club. Wow. All right, let's talk uh, AAA. They got a show December fourth. Triple Mania. How do you pronounce Triple Mania? Pronounce this for me, Steve. Uh, Regia, Regia, yeah. or Regia. I think it's a soft G. I don't know. Okay. Maggie is a soft G or RG. Anyways, okay. they announced the card for Triple Mania Regia today. <laughs> We're finally getting... Man, I've been waiting for this so long. I think it's going to happen. Kenny Omega versus Wait, Alejo Del Vikingo for the AAA Mega Championship. I think... No, I think the title change is going to happen. Oh. I think Kenny is going to lose that thing. I think Vikingo has been the dude. Uh, I know they had wanted it to be on try, I guess. But I want to see Vikingo take that title off of Kenny Omega. I think Laredo yeah, Kid, uh, his his tag partner there, was like, hey, buddy, I kicked out of a one-winged angel. A if, I was just, if I was just two-tenths of a second sooner, I would have won. Or I would have kicked it wasn't out the second rope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Avoid the second rope. And, uh, and yeah. And uh, you're good. You're and good. And you're good. I think he's got this. What do you think? You think El Vikingo is going to yeah. do it? Yeah, because Kenny's going to lose, probably lose that AEW title about three weeks prior at full gear. He'll drop the mega title to Vikingo. Oh, it's and... an H sound. That's right. Rehea. Rehea. Ah. Yeah. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, also announced for the card, Psycho Clown, Pagano, and Kane Velasquez. Oh, whoa. Kane. Wow. He'll be taking on Rea Scorpion. Taurus and a mystery opponent. Oh, who's the mystery and opponent? Could it be a know. super a frog? You think it might be one of the super frogs? I don't know. Uh, apparently, uh, also planned Lucha Brothers versus Dragon Lee and Trilistico. Oh. I guess uh, 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 it was it was. They're hoping to get FTR there to defend the titles, but you know, obviously, things have to be worked out for that to happen. So that's awesome, man. Get them super frogs back. Yeah. <laughs> so December fourth can't come soon enough. Hey, so we're gonna do a live watch along, right? Heck yeah, assuming we can, yeah. What day of the, uh, let's see. I'm are, looking. You be, are you going to be back from Disneyland by then? Yeah, so Saturday, Saturday, <laughs> December 4th. I will be back. Let's do I'm it, only man. there for like four days. You, me, the Enforcer, we'll ask uh, Alex and Kayla. Sounds do good. Do a whole Triple Mania Church of Friendos thing. I think that's cool. Sounds great. That'll work. Sounds great. All right, cool. Sounds great. Let's talk Dynamite specifically. Let's kick it off with how the end of the show. Let's talk Eliminator Tournament Brackets. That was revealed uh, after a really fun match between Bob Fish, Brian Danielson. So... Uh, the uh, field is as follows. On the left side of your bracket, you got 10 from the Dark Order mm-hmm. versus Mox. These are all first-round matchups. And then you got Orange Cassidy versus Powerhouse Hobbs. That's the left side of your bracket. Right side of your bracket, you got Brian Danielson versus Dustin Rhodes, and then Eddie Kingston versus Lance Archer. So on Rhodes to the top, uh, if you'd watch the latest episode, there's a brief little interview bit between Brian Danielson, Dustin Rhodes, so you already see the story they're setting up for that. Dustin like said, I've never won a world title. This is like my opportunity to do that. Uh, bring your A game, uh, Brian Danielson. And Brian Danielson's like, you're going to regret you said that because mm. I always bring my A game. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, I mean, clearly on one side, we got Mox versus Orange Cassidy. 
I mean, this whole thing's going to come down to Mox versus Danielson, isn't it? Uh huh. I mean, that was on that was on Tony Khan's uh, uh, notepad. That the picture. That, oh, okay. That there you go. Then yeah, and was leaked. Oh wow. Um, I I would think. I mean, given what we saw uh, on this episode of Dynamite, Mox is. Uh, I know he's usually a surly son of a bitch. He might be like full on son of a bitch at this point, though. I mean, the way he handled Wheeler Yuta, holy crap. Yeah, he destroyed him. That was rough in like moments it took. Yeah, it was uh, a squash match. So uh, Mox versus Danielson uh, for what's going to be Hangman's world title at that point. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How do you see that one going? I would assume Daniel Bryan, but who knows? Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson. Because I literally just looked up Dean Ambrose versus Daniel Bryan. Because I was assuming they had wrestled before. And yes, I did in 2013. Brian Danielson, uh, uh, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that's the that's the word. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if if Mox is a true bad guy, then I guess anything's possible. At some point, you know, these big signees they have taken L. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, I assume I assume Brian Danielson would take that L, but not to Mox, but to Hank Van Page. That's a possibility as well. Yeah, that's a possibility as well. So I don't know. We'll find out. Don't know where my confidence points are yet. You'll find out on uh, whatever day that happens, November Disneyland Day for Larson. 13th. 13th is the pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, Given that you're not there, does that mean you vacate your spot for uh, vying for the title? No, we'll just do our picks in advance. Do we have to change every? That's not the way we do picks now for AEW, though. Well, the only time. Well, this never had not well, be around for that. I will hold on. What? Hold on there. You be texting it in. First of all, uh, we did the picks on the, on the spot last time because it was kind of like a last minute decision. We were going to do that yeah. for you to defend the belt, and it's never been established. That's how we're going to do them in AEW. You, had we've said, never established that. We never established said, that was going to be the norm. You had said, "Hey, if it's not WWE, we should do it this way." I suggested it. That doesn't mean that we've made that decision. Yeah, let's do it that way. If you're not there, well, you don't I get to. No, Wait that's bullshit. Wait, aren't you the no. AEW champion? I am. Oh, man, you got to be there to put it up on the line. Okay. Anyways, well, I can't. I can't uh, be there. what's that? I'm going to be on Mr. No, Toad's no, I mean, Wild I mean, Ride. I mean, I mean, yeah, you got to put it yeah. up. Yeah, yeah I got to be there. I yeah. got to be there. Yeah. yeah so we got to do them in advance. Yeah, we got to do it in advance. Fair enough. All right. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so that's great. Uh, I thought this was a fun enough episode of Dynamite. Yeah, it was. Um, I took I took the most basic of notes because I watched it last night at like eleven o'clock at night. Oh, I watched it this morning. Yeah, um, but no, My notes I thought, aren't terribly copious either. I thought, uh, let's see here. I'm looking. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on last night. I thought, mm-hmm. yeah, there wasn't a lot not to like. Kicked no. off with Malachi Black versus Dante Martin. Malachi Black had a sudden violent bout of uh, seemingly like I don't know diarrhea or something because he started holding. His midsection, mid match, yeah. he was like, and he started coughing up and stuff. He was like, bleh, bleh, yeah. like a hairball or something. And CM Punk said, "I wonder if it's because of the mist." Yeah, I, CM Punk was hilarious on commentary. By the way, he was like sort of addressing so many different tropes in pro wrestling. Like when FTR came out with those masks on, and commentary had no way to respond to it. He was like, "Guys, it's clearly FTR." Tony, yeah. you see this, right? And Tony was dead silent. I know. It was hilarious. I think they were waiting for uh, for direction from uh, Tony from the or, producers. or Cody or something. Yeah. 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 Like, just roll with it. But, yeah, he was like, okay, guys, come on. You have to see this. It's FTR. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all kind of like, yeah, maybe it could be. And then when they unmasked or, or when they started to, to undo the mask, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no, that's clearly, that's clearly <laughs> FTR. And then when they actually unmasked, aha. It is FTR. Ricky Rabies. Always uh, always mixing it up. Yeah, yeah. so uh, 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 Malachi uh, needed some uh, Pepto, but regardless, got that black mass uh, and uh, on, on Dante Martin. His new uh, financial and wrestling advisor, LBO Leo Rush, ringside in uh, it, disapproving the entire time. Yeah. Just like yeah. The, mo- the, the most looks of disappointment. Yeah. Whatever and then after the match, uh, uh, Malachi is walking up the ramp, kind of turns around and gives Dante a little nod. Yeah. He needs to start recruiting. And I think Dante I Martin would be terrific. He turns on LBO Leo because I hope they don't make that into a thing too long. Because obviously, 
Dante's like, why did I even get involved with you with this guy? Now he wants to be my tag partner. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Go yeah. to the, go to the house of Malachi Black. Yeah. Um, after that, we had uh, Jungle Boy Luchasaurus interview. Jungle Boy says they're banged up. Christian has a bad neck. He says he's feeling sore. Thank goodness that Luchasaurus could even walk after that devastating power bomb last week from the Elite. Of course, refer- referencing the power bomb that looked like it was anything but devastating. So. Kenny and Adam Cole walk in. They start kind of talking trash back and forth. Young Buck super kicked Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus from behind. And then uh, Adam Cole uh, makes Jung- uh, Jungle Boy watch as Ooh. Kenny and the Young Bucks powerbomb him Ouch. through a table. That was pretty rough. Or powerbomb Luchasaurus through a table. Sorry. Uh, after that, we had uh, the Inner Circle are reunited after what, like maybe a month or so? Like it really didn't even seem. I mean, it's pretty much the Santana Ortiz were just doing their own thing for a while. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm just not into this America Top Team angle. You can you can try to justify it any way you want. They're irrelevant. They're popular. I am not into it at all. They did, you know, and. F- People have been saying this for weeks now. Why don't they they give the mic to Scorpio Sky but not to Ethan Page? He's like the best talker out of all those people, including Dan Lambert, who gave the, they give the mic to quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. They just don't – why Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page don't need anybody doing the talking for them. They're both perfectly good on the mic. I know. You know? Yeah. They don't need anybody doing the talking for them. I mean, I kind of appreciate the America top team element – does, I guess, in the minds of probably many, elevate them as, hey, we've got some high-profile friends. I understand that that does make them a bigger deal, and I, and I, I think it does. That being said, the way this is all being executed, I'm, just, I'm not interested in any of it. Here's the thing for me is, is it feels like if you're going to do this to elevate men of the year, then you really got to elevate men of the year. Mm-hmm, yeah, but I feel like at the end of this, the inner circle is going to get the win. Yeah, and men of the year are kind of going to be in the same position they were when this whole thing began. It can't just be, "Hey, we're here, we're involved in this." You have to get something out of it. Also, they got to find a way to convince me that in this ten man tag match that's probably coming up, that <laughs> makes it believable for inner circle not to get absolutely destroyed. Man. You got men of the year plus three partners who are trained mixed martial artists. Listen, it's pro. This is the universe of pro wrestling, man. Doesn't matter. The Doesn't Judas matter. effect is more powerful than I can. I can only suspend my disbelief so much. <laughs> All right. All right, man. I'm telling you in that in this squared circle there's something magical about the wrestling ring where 55 year old men can drop scorpion death drops on 25 year old men. And, like, it totally makes sense. (laughs) So I apply the same logic when trained lethal fighters walk in there. Their powers are negated by the Judas effect, the 450 splash, the 630 senton, all that stuff. That it means nothing because they don't have the power of professional wrestling. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Anyways, run through this as quickly as you can. All right. Really so pretty much uh, Santana comes out and sort of says, uh, hey, we're back together because uh, everybody but us was dealing with uh, America Top Team. And this brings out America Top Team. Dan Lambert starts talking a bunch of nonsense, says, hey, show us some respect. Uh, Jericho then starts talking trash about Paige Van Zant. Won't get into that. But he says, now the jokes are done. Uh, they're reunited. And they want a tag man, ten man tag team match. He says, "Man of the year, you can choose who you want as your partners. No one's crazier in the inner circle." Lambert Primit says, "I have terms." Sammy Guevara, sorry, he says, "Man of the year, they're looking for gold, so I have terms." Sammy, you're a champion, so you have the the stroke to get us a tag title match. So I'll tell you what my terms are next week, and if you agree to my terms, then you can get your ten man tag match. Scorpio Sky uh, is on the mic next. Says you have to wait. But here's something to think about, Jericho. I pinned you twice, and Sammy just says, hey, all of you shut up. Uh, I'm going to kick your ass next week. Good. That was a good good summation there. Uh, after that, we had Las Superranas, Los Superranas versus Lucha Brothers. This is the Super Frogs against mm-hmm. the Lucha Brothers. So these are the guys that Andrade uh, uh, got uh, brought out. He was like, hey, these are my uh, hermanos in pro wrestling, my brothers. And uh, let's go ahead and do this clearly from the get-go. And I didn't see FTR. him tell me this. 
It's FTR. It was clearly FTR. So it's FTR. Yeah. And actually, pretty early into the match, they were unmasked. Um and uh and yeah and then they ended up winning they ended up winning the uh the 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 triple A tag titles that was kind of yeah. crazy that yeah. the the, yeah. the finishing bit where uh Tully was distracting the ref Phoenix was going for a moonsault mm-hmm. and uh, Dax uh whacked him in the head with a triple A title was so perfectly timed mm-hmm. like man that was great uh followed with a brain buster for the win new triple a tag champion so hopefully we'll see them come december 4th yeah that'd be great that'd be cool that'd be great you gotta you gotta assume that we're gonna see ftr versus lucha brothers at a full gear for the AEW tag titles then too i wonder if it's gonna be like a title versus title Title for title thing where lucha brothers just gets the titles back entirely possible yeah 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 Uh, after that we had dante martin and leo rush interview uh leo says what happens tonight uh, was meant to happen in order to succeed. You got to fail. Uh, and Dante failed. It was of his own doing and he knows that. So then uh, Leo tells Dante, listen to him. Everything will be money from this day forward. You're going to have a new tag partner. And it's Leo Rush. And Dante, Dante didn't exactly seem into it. He looked not into this the entire time. He was like, uh, like Leo even had to, like he put out his fist for the fist bump and Dante just sort of looked at him. He was like, come on. Was like, mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Yeah, dude. Uh, after that, we had an FTR interview where uh, Dax dubs them the greatest luchadors of all time. MJF mm-hmm. comes in, hugs them, tells them to get out of here. Andrade steps up to MJF, offers his hand, and MJF says, uh, money first. And Andrade's assistant hands over the money. MJF gets really happy, gives him a big hug, and says, but remember, our deal was for one night only, right? And he was like, yeah, he called Andrade puppy. <laughs> That was pretty funny. Uh, after that, we had Wheeler Yuta versus I John Moxley. Just to punch up to him. I know, I know. Uh, this match was not long because Vox oh beat the hell out God. of Wheeler Yuta, hit him with a paradigm shift, leaves through the crowd. Of course, Orange Cassidy uh, joined uh, Wheeler Yuta ringside, and he gets from the ring to kind of check on him and looks back to where Mox, you know, left back out through the crowd. You know, as 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 much as as Orange Cassidy could see the anger, that's what he was doing there. Yeah, I don't know what his problem was though. Like, it's not like Mox cheated. He just beat the shit out of a guy and gave him oh, yeah, no. minutes. Like he did what he needed to do. He did the paradigm shift. Wheeler, What's you the phrase? Does he get paid by the hour? Right. Yeah. Exactly. He's not getting yeah. paid to put on a thirty minute clinic. Nope. He wants the winner's purse. Exactly. Yeah, he's got better things to do. He's probably tired. And I, I know this is probably setting up Orange Cassidy versus Mox in the second round of the tournament. Really want Hobbs to win that first round bout. Really want Hobbs to win. Against Orange Cast. I know, but you know how that goes. Orange is Orange is booked really strong. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Uh then we got a Serena Deeb interview. Uh she was talking about how she was on sabbatical. She came back, said it was only a matter of time before she had to pull the women's division up to her level, but then Hikaru Shida comes in, they start brawling. I appreciate that CM Punk pointed out the nice head of hair on Serena D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we had the Super Click versus the Dark Order. Got our shirts on. It's a great shirt. Oh, I got to do this one. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Okay. Wait, no. Just, okay. There we Here go. we go. That way. <laughs> we'll get it right. No, we won't. Uh, this no, we is, did. We did. This, we did. This is fun stuff. So Super Click attack before the bell. Uh, trying to hit a power bomb on Silver on the stage, he reversed that into a run on Cole. Dark Order got the upper hand. There was some really good stuff here. We had Uno yanking off uh, Nick that Jackson's was shoe, then a sock, uh, and then he did a Mister Socko on on Nick, which was that was great, which was really great. The Super Click did the setup for the kiss spot, but then Silver and Reynolds pulled the Young Bucks out of the ring. Then they go up and they do the kiss on Adam Cole. And there's a great gif out there that uh, that gets this moment where he's all happy and he realizes that it's not the Young Bucks and he like looks terrified. He looks over. Then they take him out. Yeah. In the end, though, the Super Click end up getting the win after a beat. There was this awesome finishing se- or you know semi finishing sequence in the Dark Order just hit Cole oh, yeah. with everything they had. It was great. It was and then great. Nick Jackson uh, uh, broke up the pin there, but it was just a really terrific. The way Reynolds the Silver could put together offense so like quickly 10 moves in 30 seconds is amazing it's really fantastic yeah uh so the super click get the bte trigger and then the boom uh on reynolds for the win mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. jungle boy runs to the ring goes after cole he gets overwhelmed he gets tossed from the ring by the young bucks 
Young Bucks get a chair from under the ring. The Cole and the Bucks leave. Uh, Cutler sprays the chair with cold spray. That was great. But then the uh, Jungle Boy clocks him with the chair, puts him in a snare trap, uh, goads the, uh, the 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 super click, and they come in, but they don't come down. Well, he's spraying the cold spray in uh, yeah. Cutler's face too. Yeah, it's pretty. It was rough. pretty great. It was pretty great. This uh, is my <laughs> favorite part. This next this part. This is pretty solid. So this is great. So Cody and Arn arrive at Dustin's school, wrestling academy, in a truck. They get out, and Dustin opens the, the garage door to go in, and there is Brock Anderson, Red Velvet, Lee Johnson, among others, and the door opens, and they just all start talking shit to Cody. Oh, so nice of you to join us. Mr. And Hollywood, Red Velvet slaps him. Slaps him. Them. It was great. So Arn's like, all right, we're going to do something from, you say you're some, from like a football drill. Yeah. Whereas defense, Cody's, defense, defense. Yeah, yeah. Cody stands in the middle of the ring and there's five people in the ring with him and he has to try to fend them off mm-hmm. while Arn's more or less barking orders at him. Yeah. And so he's handling it for a while and t- eventually he just eats, you know, like a shot from somebody and he starts complaining. He's like, why do I have to do this? I'm not learning shit. <laughs> yeah. And Arn reminds them that, hey, he shows them a picture. I don't recall what it's from. So the picture is of uh, 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 Dusty opening up Arn Anderson and giving him a bunch of stitches. And he yeah. says, do you think anybody was booing your dad here? No. Yeah. I deserved it because I was being a piece of shit. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I deserved it, it at the time. I had yeah. it coming. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. And so he says, "This mind you, never let never do anything to let the kids down. And he says, uh, yeah, I hate to admit this, but I had it coming. And I'm going to tell you now that Malachi Black has it coming. Yeah. But, like, he shouldn't, Cody shouldn't beat him and he's going to. <laughs> I know. This was really well filmed, though. I will say this. At least they're trying to make a story out of Cody winning the match as opposed to just he, he goes away for a while, comes back and wins, you know? I, dude, I honestly think, look, I'm not a fan of Cody beating Malachi Black. Nor but am I. At, at the same time, what I saw with Malachi Black tonight, or sorry, last night, this weekend. And I think they will manage to keep him looking good and looking strong, even though Cody's going to win this. It would be pretty great if they did everything they could to set up expectations that Cody was going to win, and Malachi even beat him quicker than he did the first time. You know? <laughs> Look, in my universe, that would be great. In our universe, that would be awesome. But I think they're going to do this properly. Uh, I actually really legitimately uh, for for reasons both due to the quality of it and the unintentional comedy of it enjoyed this segment. Uh, all those, you know, aren't just having everybody run at Cody and, and beat the shit out of him. Oh, like, I'm not Red learning Velvet anything here. Cody, when Red Velvet slapped Cody, I laughed. I was like, yeah. oh, this is great. That was pretty That was pretty good stuff. That was great. Uh, after that, we had a MJF promo. So he comes to the ring as if he's supposed to have a match against Darby still, he gives Justin Roberts some crap for not announcing him, so he does it himself. And he was like, oh, Darby's not here. Uh, I guess I did break you, Darby. And he calls Darby unprofessional for not showing up, even though he got attacked last week and says, this goes to show Darby will always be the number two guy around here. MJF says, I'm number one. But everybody here wanted to see a match between Darby and myself. So I'm going to give it to him. Calls out Wardlow. Warlow comes to the ring with uh, Bryce Remsburg, the ref, and then MJF tells Bryce, you got to count 10, and if Darby doesn't come to the ring, you got to name me the winner. So Bryce starts counting. He gets to five. Sting comes out. Mm-hmm. He walks to the ring. MJF shoves Warlow into Sting. Sting hits with the bat. MJF runs up the ramp, acts like he's going to go back in the ring to fight Sting, and then walks away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had an Anna J interview, but she's interrupted pretty much immediately by Britt. Says the super click beat up the dark order because they're losers. And Anna's like, they're not losers. And Britt says, they literally lost. They're losers. You're a loser because you hang out with them. You're also a follower. You're nothing without them. And Ty Conti. And then Anna uh, punches Britt. They brawl. Refs break it up. Mm-hmm. And then we got uh, Kira Hogan versus Penelope Ford. Man, they have uh, zero chemistry. There was like literally three times during this match where they just sort of stood at each other and tried to figure out what the hell it's supposed to do. Oh, next. yeah. Yeah. So uh, Ford got the win. It's a, a handspring cutter, follows with the Moodle lock, and then Ruby Soho runs down the ring. She starts attacking Ford, throws her out to the ramp. Man, how awesome was this Miro promo? Miro's the absolute best, man. This is great. The absolute best. This is absolute. So he's, he's you know, he's basically 
shouting at God. He's shouting down God in this. Yeah, he's, he's like, so wonder, good. Yeah, you can go ahead and take it. I know you're All right, he says, uh, so I wonder why you're not answering. Is this funny to you? He says, uh, I love my wife, but I can't go to home to her like this. Have I displeased you? Have I not given you enough praise? You've given me a body of granite and a neck of sand. Is this some kind of joke? That was such a great line. Acknowledging his own shortcomings, his neck, his bad neck. Such, so a, good. such a great line. Yeah. So he says, where is my God? Uh, to tell me why you've forsaken your champion. He says, I've done, I'm done pleading, and now I'm telling my God. Uh, he says, you'll make me champ or you'll make me an enemy. Everyone will get no pain until I get my title back. Yeah. It's so good. We have good said stuff. before, I don't think anybody, maybe in wrestling, at least maybe in AEW, is as efficient with their promo time as Miro is. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. This is like maybe a he, minute. He, yeah. yeah. And he gets maximum impact out of that minute. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Miro is tops. Yeah, they should have him fight God. Uh, after that, we had a Hangman Page interview. This was great, too. Yeah, this is awesome. Got a great response. He said he's excited for full gear. He says, in 2019, him and his friends left their home to start AEW. He was excited and believed in their vision to change the world, but he feels like the world had changed us. He says, it changed me, anyways. He told us, he told. He says, I told you guys I'd be the first AEW champion, and I failed. I lost to Jericho, I lost to Pac, and I felt I started to lose more. I left, lost my confidence, my friends, and myself. But one thing I didn't lose, the thing that grew that got louder is the fans chanting cowboy shit. And he said to him, that's very real, because cowboy shit was real. He was winning the tag titles. He was letting the past be in the past and accepting new friends into his life. He was taking his chance to put it all at the line, to stick his neck out for his friends who stuck their necks out for him, and I was going home to be there at the peak of my career when things were going better than ever, going home, leaving it all for the birth of my son. He says, next week I put my body on the line to grab that well, chip. He said the week after, that. I went last week. The week the, after, the yeah. yeah. Uh, to grab that chip, the, the battle royal, to get a shot at one thing that's eluded me the whole time. He says, when you fall off, you get back on the horse and you keep going because that's cowboy shit. He says, I'm not a fortune teller. Tell but it feels like people all still believe in him. And for the first time in his life, he believes in himself too. So the promise he can make is that at full gear, he will give everything he has. He will give us cowboy shit. Yeah, it was great. Like basically a near perfect baby face promo. It was awesome. It was really good. It was really good. It was really good. Uh, in the main event, we got Bobby Fish versus Brian Danielson. You know, a uh, hard hitting physical match, working over legs. At the end, Danielson was wrecking Fish's leg, and we put that heel hook on yeah. to get the win. Yeah. He was really torquing on that thing when he locked it in. Yeah, I was like, ah, it's like it hurts. Yeah, it was good stuff. It was fun match. Fun match. Brian Danielson gets the win. Uh, want to do a raw preview real quick? Uh, yeah, let's do a raw preview. Let's see here. What do we got? Uh, oh wow, this is great. Big E. I've seen Dr- this match before. Dude, and, this- <laughs> did you see that Drew McIntyre <laughs> tweeted about this? Like, oh, I love first time matches or something like that. Yeah. All right. So Big E and Drew McIntyre are going to take on the Dirty Dogs two weeks after Again. they already took on the Dirty Dogs. Again. And after their tag team already fell apart last week. I, I, this is the. It's another fucking whim. Oh, let's do the Can They Coexist over and over again. Anyway. Again, I know. I know. Uh, Charlotte Flair defend the Raw Wins Championship, excuse me, against Bianca Belair. So Bianca costs Becky her match against. Sasha. Sasha. Becky cost Bianca her match against Charlotte. Charlotte. Is there any way that Charlotte gets added to the match at Crown Royal for, so all the belts are on the line or both titles are on the line? They should just unify the damn titles. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. I, I mean, this, I, look, this, I would like to think that this match will like sort of tell us a lot about what's going to go down at Crown Royal. I feel like it's going to tell nothing. <laughs> I feel like it's yeah. absolutely no. There's going to be no real outcome to this match. That will inform us of anything. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, Xavier Woods and Jinder Mahal clash the King of the Rings semifinal. So this will actually either be a really fun uh, match with Xavier Woods coming out on top, or it'll be a, a, a fun bout that will leave us kind of scratching our head in terms of why they at least didn't allow or book Xavier Woods to get to the finals. Yeah, it's the second one. Jinder Mahal's going to win this. Yeah, he's going to win this. Then yeah. Finn will beat him and in in, in probably win. But I'm yeah. not certain of that either Jinder Mahal definitely is the most 
the the most like King of the Ring type personality in this whole thing. Totally. You could totally see it. Absolutely. A thousand percent. I just don't see Finn being pinned like a month after he did that goofy oh, turnbuckle gosh. spot. Yeah. I know. I know. Uh, Dewdrop and Shayna Baszler going to fight in the Queen's Crown Tournament semifinals. I know. I, given that both these people typically, I mean, the Queen's Crown so far has been a big turd because none of the matches have lasted more than like three minutes. Mm-hmm. Most far under that. This is kind of the same because Dewdrop and Shayna both win their matches really quickly. So I kind of feel like it's going to be the same, but maybe this will be the one outlier. Yeah. I, mean, I kind of feel like whoever wins this match is going to win the tournament, though. Yeah. Yeah, and then Street Profits returned to Raw about a week earlier than they were supposed to to face RK Bro. They're just there, yeah. All they set the... rules for the draft, and then they pretty much immediately broke them. Yeah, none, n- none of it. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and answer a couple of questions here. Sounds we got a good. thread up on the Twitter. Uh, let's see here. Ah, from Juan Guerrero Jr., Mister Triple Mania. If Minoru Suzuki continues showing up. Wherever he wants to, well into the next year, who do you book him against at? Triple Mania. Ooh. Oh, it's just. Oh, how do you not do Dr. Wagner Jr.? I know he's not in Triple Mania currently, but how do you not do Dr. Wagner Jr. versus. I like that you just referred to Triple A the way Werner Herzog refers to Oh, WB. Triple Mania. Oops. <laughs> triple Mania. I know he's no longer in the Triple Mania. He's not Triple A. Uh, it's either Dr. Wagner Jr. or Blue Demon Jr. No, man, it's Chess Man. Uh, Connor <laughs> says, should Cross go around taking out 24-7 guys backstage every week like he did the NXT enhancement talent until we get to Reggie and it's revealed to be Cross behind the attacks? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Put Cross in the 24-7 division. Why not? Oh, yeah. He kind of belongs dump, there anyways. He can win and dump the title to get rid of it for good while also sending a message to the roster. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Sean Lathrop, he says, hoping I'm not too late. In the long run, who will be the better faction? American Top Team or Diamond Mine? Oh, Diamond Mine. Diamond Mine, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ivy Nile alone. Yeah, White Brownie, given that Asuka has done everything a female competitor could do in WWE except winning the NXT Women Tag Titles or having a mania moment when she returns, should she be booked for another title run or be used as a gatekeeper for upcoming talent? Don't do that second one. titles. Titles. Dominant, re- like don't rebrand, but repackage her and just yeah, dominant, murdering a new monster in the women's division, mm-hmm. freshen mm-hmm. things up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hugh Long Heavy, AEW has established the four original pillars for their future, but in the past two years, who have they added that can also be called future pillars? Uh, in terms of future pillars of the tag team division, top flight, I think. Yeah. Um. Uh, there's a couple other good ones as well. Uh, Jade Cargill. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Anna J probably too. Anna J is a good one. Uh, man. I was just thinking. Yeah, me too. Because there are a couple more. Now I forget. Yeah, me too. I forgot. Too. Hobbs. Thank you. Gareth says there Hobbs. You. There. There. Hobbs that's a good, is a good one. Good name. Good name. Oh, NJW- Daniel, Daniel Garcia. That's a good name. Yes. Guess. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah. NJWP as trios titles will come to AEW at some point. Who should be the first title match for them? Oh, who should be in the first title match? It's got to be the Super Click. Super Click. Versus Jurassic Express. Yeah, absolutely. Super Click wins. Uh, Greg Morris, let's say Big E retains on Thursday. What would be bigger for him? Losing to Brock or Roman in a competitive match at Survivor Series? Oof, they're both, they both have history. What would be bigger for him in a competitive match? Well, what's, what would be better for Big E? Losing to Brock in a competitive match or Roman? I would say Brock. Well, no, because Roman's about to beat Brock, but Roman's probably gonna have to cheat to do it. I would say Brock. I'd say I, I would say Brock just because of the story the New Day have with Brock with Kofi. Mm. Big E can kind of mm-hmm. kind of get a little make good for that if he loses in a way that Kofi should have lost in the first place. 
Yeah. Uh, Jason Lewis, who's living the best life right now? Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, or Minoru Suzuki? I can kind of only speak to either Cole or Danielson because I feel like Suzuki... I feel like the fans get to appreciate Suzuki in a whole nother way, but he's had such a long life in pro wrestling anyways. I feel like he's already done a lot of stuff. Cole Danielson. I get the feeling it's Danielson because only four years ago, five years ago, he thought he was done. He thought he was done. And now he has this whole other world open to him where he gets to appreciate things like fighting Minoru Suzuki, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And he I, said funny. just as recently as April, he kind of was not really into pro wrestling. Yeah. Now seemingly he's gotten his passion back, and that's yeah. great to see. Daniel Bryanson for sure. Yeah. Uh, all Al Long, the Watchtower, what a great name, mm -hmm. uh, says with two match of the year contenders in his first month in AEW, has uh, uh, Daniel Bryanson shown he's, shown he's the best in the world right now. Yeah, he's, he's one been, of the best. He's been on my best He's probably been my number one for a little. It's like him and Zack Sabre Jr. And yeah. like for a spell, maybe Adam Cole are like my number one guys for a while now. Uh, Lord Ziffer, way too early predictions for the world title matches at Mania. I think uh, what happens at Crown Royal Thursday will really inform whether we're going to get Reigns and Brock again at Mania or not. Because um, if if the Rock, the match against the Rock is 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 off the board, it's not going to happen. Like, who else is there for Roman to face? That's a huge name at Mania for him to beat, you know? Uh, I could see them maybe holding off on Drew versus Roman at Mania. I don't really see Drew as that huge of a name. But he's definitely going to be the one that, like, they're going to make us think he's got a shot. Yeah. And then he just, it won't happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say as far as the WWE championship, I have no idea. Oh, you know what they might oh, do? Give us, give us Big E versus Goldberg. Another thing that might inform us in terms of, well, I was going to say Goldberg versus Roman. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Mania. That could be a thing. I don't think Big E's going to have the title come Mania. I hope he does. I don't think he's going to have it by me. There's too many, but I think like Seth is going to be, you know, have a good chance of getting that edge. There's so many people who are sort of on par with Big E over there on, on raw um, Orton riddle. Like I know, I know it's I know. wide open, which kind of makes it cool. You know, it kind of makes it exciting. Uh, Blake Whitehouse. Are there any plans for you guys to review heels or at least just Steve on Russell juice? Uh, I'm waiting for the rest of the episodes to show up free. Uh, through the stars app, and that happens, I'll get caught up. So, if there's gonna be a, a review forthcoming, it'll just be on Russell Juice. Yeah, I'll probably do one this week since I just watched the the finale uh, yesterday. But once Larson's done with it, we'll probably talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Uh, the wild dude with Samoa Joe voicing King Shark in the upcoming Suicide Game. Which wrestlers do you think would make good voice actors? Adam Cole. Mm -hmm. I'd like Adam Cole to be one of the one of your um, side mission guides in a Halo game. Oh, I wouldn't go. play it because I don't like Halo, but I know he loves Halo. He does love Halo. So I think uh, that would Biggie, be Biggie should do some uh, voice work. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. Uh, what we got here, Hugh Matthews. Since Kofi and Big E have become WWE champions, scale of one to ten, with ten being the most likely, what do you think the odds are that Xavier Woods gets a run within the next couple of years to complete the New Day trifecta, even if it's just a short run within the next few years? As much as I, a couple of years, as much two, as I'd love to see it, two, it's not going to happen. Probably unlikely. Yeah, there's too many. There's too many top line guys. Uh, Joshua Culver, do you think the TBS tournament will have eight, 16, or even 32 participants? I would guess eight. That would be my guess. That'd be my guess as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, easy does it. We'll end on this one. This is a good one. Do you guys think Vince will ever get involved in this war of words between the companies? 
Uh, he kind of did with that media call about we don't do the blood and guts stuff. That was a while ago. Whenever there's a media call, he's always asked about AEW, and he always gives his his thoughts on it. But I don't see him tweeting about it no. at all. I think he feels like that's beneath him. Did you watch Succession last night? The uh, No, we're watching yeah. it on Tuesday. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think he's ever going to tweet about it. Yeah. No, I don't think so either. That's going to do it for us. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Twitch chat, stick around. We'll answer some more of your questions, and we'll raid somebody. Until yeah. next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>